Yo, what is up everybody? Uh, this is the video that I did not know that I needed to make, but we're making it. Uh, I've had 101 people comment on the animation video that I put in this playlist that the original animation modifier is deprecated and people are very confused how to use the new one. Uh, the new one is literally the same line of code with like one extra value in it, but I've had enough people comment asking how to use it that they thought it would deserve its own video. So that's what we're gonna dive into here. Uh, but I actually wanna show you guys that not just how to use this new modifier, but why Apple has changed the API. Because this new modifier, it's not just changing our code, it's actually giving us more control over the animation as the developer. So I assume most of you already know how to use this, but uh, it's definitely tripping some people up. So let's cover it, let's get in our toolbox, and let's move on. Welcome back, everybody. My name is Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking, and we're going to look at animation yet again in this playlist. Let's right click the navigator, create a new file. This will be a Swift UI view as always. We're going to call this one Animation Updated Bootcamp. And let's click Create. And the reason we're calling it updated is because earlier in this playlist, we already did an animation bootcamp. So if I come back up here to one of the earliest, maybe video number 20 or something like that, we did an animation timing and an animation bootcamp here. Let's mark this animation bootcamp as deprecated. Now we can see already here that in the regular animation modifier that we went over in this last bootcamp, we get this warning here from the compiler that it is deprecated in iOS 15 and to use the other animation modifier that we're going to learn right now. If I right click and jump to the definition of this, we can see the at available iOS and the deprecated message here. And so what we're gonna do is actually copy this deprecated, this at available, and we're gonna put it on here. We're doing that just so that if we were to use the animation bootcamp, we would get another warning. So for example, if I put this up here and I call this, we're gonna now get a warning that animation bootcamp was deprecated. So obviously this is not a real app, so it doesn't really matter. And we're gonna use a star here, so it's for all platforms. And we're just gonna put the message here and let's use the new animation updated bootcamp instead. All right, so I'm gonna jump into the animation updated bootcamp and let's first look at why Apple has made this change and then how we can use the new modifier. All right, so there are a lot of use cases here. I'm just gonna go through a very simple one just to kind of you know highlight what's going on here. Let's create a Z stack. And in here, let's add maybe a V stack. Let's do some spacing of about 40. And let's just put in maybe a button that says action one. And we're gonna put an action and then we're going to just copy and paste that and we're gonna do an action two as well. Below this on the V stack, let's add in a rectangle real quick. I'm gonna give it a frame of maybe 100 by 100. That looks pretty good. And I'm just gonna wrap this in some sort of Z stack as well. So that on this Z stack here, so I'll put a background of color.red. And then I'll just set this to be a max width to a frame of maybe a max width of infinity and a max height of infinity again we don't we are just setting up some like basic view here this is not really important that we have a ui but so what we're going to do is basically animate this rectangle around the screen real quick and i'm going to start by doing a, another frame here we're just going to say a frame with a max width of infinity and let's add an alignment of leading all right, so just so we can see this frame versus this frame, this frame is obviously black. This frame, after we extend it to infinity, let's add a background of color.green. All right, so what we're gonna do is basically animate this square here from the left side to the right side. And we're gonna do that by animating the alignment to trailing. I've done this in earlier videos. This is not new logic. Let's get that working. So up here, I'm gonna do an at state private var, let's say, animate one of type bool equals false. 
And when we click on action one, we're gonna call animate one toggle. Let's do a very simple ternary operator here. We'll say animate one. If it's true, we will go leading. Otherwise, we will go trailing. All right. And when I click it, we can see it jump. Awesome. Now let's get into some animation. So firstly, it's just jumping, but maybe we want to actually animate it from the side, from side to side. And so what we can do is apply maybe a dot animation. And there are two completions here. So obviously, it's a deprecated one that we've previously used. And then there's this new one. But let's start with the deprecated one here. And I'm just going to do maybe a dot spring for now. All right, so we got this pretty cool animation. Obviously, it's working. But let's imagine now we want to do another animation where it maybe goes up and down. So I'm just going to copy and paste this line here. And I'm going to do another one with maybe a max height of infinity. And let's just change it so the first one is green and this no max height now is orange. Okay, so what we're going to do is basically animate green left and right and we're going to animate orange top to bottom. And so inside the orange, let's do alignment from top to bottom. So when I click animation, obviously it's working. But now this is kind of obviously not a real screen in your app, but there are many times in your app where you're going to have multiple animations or effects inside the same view. So for example, maybe we wanted action two to move it up and down and then action one to go left and right. So I could say, create a second animate two here and we can toggle that inside action two and then animate two will go top to bottom. So now I can do this action here and I can do this action here. Obviously it's working perfectly, but what you're noticing is that the spring animation here is applied to both of these actions. And so what is the use case if I wanted action one to be a spring and I wanted action two to maybe be a different animation timing? Maybe I wanted no animation on action two. Now I can't actually stop it, right? So if I took off the animation, I can now do both without animation, but I can't just do one with animation and one without. And that's kind of where this new animation modifier is our savior. So you guys don't know how many people have commented on my previous animation video that it is deprecated and they are, people I guess are super confused on what to do. All we need to do is use the animation value instead. And so what this allows us to do is another modifier where we had a value. And the only difference is that this animation is only going to be applied when this value changes. So previously, this animation is applied to any change on this view, right? Whether or not it's animate one, animate two, whether we're moving the rectangle or something else on the screen, anything that changes on this view is gonna get this animation. And that led to a lot of like bugs and like weirdness in Swift UI apps because you would have things that are animating that you didn't mean to animate. And so the solution here is this new value modifier where we can specify that I wanna use the spring animation specifically for animate one. So when animate one changes, anything that, is, anything that is changing due to animate one will get that spring modifier. So if I look at action one here, I now get that spring modifier. If I look at action two, there's no animation. So this is actually a major upgrade for us as SwiftUI developers because we can now customize and very explicitly tell this view, what do we want to animate? How do we want to animate? When do we want to animate? It's not this one animation modifier that's applied to everything. So for example, I could do a second here with an animate two now, and I can stack these animation modifiers. So now animate two also has spring, but I could also maybe change animate two to a linear of maybe five seconds. So now I got the nice spring going left and right, and I have this five seconds going up and down. Obviously not incredibly important, the UI in this video, but it is important to understand that the, the value is that with this new modifier, we can have much more control over what is animating, when it is animating, which animation timings are being used. So very simple and subtle change to your code but it has major impacts when you're building complex Swift UI apps. All right, that's it for this video. Hope you guys are now maybe a little less confused. I can't tell you how many people commented on the previous video. 
So this is the new way to use animation. I highly, highly recommend it. The last thing I will point out is that in the original deprecated message, it does say use with animation or the new animation modifier. The with animation basically has the same problems that this original animation modifier has. So my recommendation is to use the animation with the value 100% of the time. It's the only one that I'm using in my apps. All right. And I will just leave this here so that we know that this one, I will mark this one as maybe deprecated. Awesome. Thank you guys for watching. As always, I'm Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.